Hello. Would you ever think to paint with just the color blue? Or to paint like a child when you have the ability to paint like a master? Well, one artist did. And those are some of the things that have made him one of the most famous artists that ever lived. I'm talking about Picasso. Let's take a look at a short documentary about Picasso's life and see if we can figure out why he painted using only blue and why he painted in the style that he did. On the 25th of October, 1881, a baby of just 10 days old was baptized according to strict Catholic tradition in the church of Santiago al Mayor in Malaga in southern Spain. His baptismal name was Pablo Diego José Francisco de Paula, María de los Remedios Cipriano de la Santísima Trinidad. He was to become known as Pablo Picasso. In tubes of paint, he would spend hours watching his father paint his canvases. Don Jose specialized in a somewhat surprising subject, pigeons. Art for dining rooms and highly prized by the middle classes of Malaga. Quite naturally, as he observed his father perfecting the plumage of his pigeons, Pablo started drawing. More than for any other child, drawing would become his life's passion. From his early years, Pablo drew bullfighting scenes, like this one, when he was not yet eight years old. His pencil strokes were quick, very different from the more labored efforts of a child of that age. He wasn't afraid to sketch the crowd in outline in order to concentrate on the fight going on in the ring. One evening, Don Jose asked Pablo to finish one of his pigeon paintings. Pablo was 14 years old. As usual, he carried out the task incredibly quickly and with a steady hand. Don Jose was stunned by his son's undoubted mastery. But he also realized that his life as a painter was a failure. He knew then that he would never belong to the important artistic circles of Spain. So in a solemn gesture, he gave his palette, brushes and paints to Pablo. In 1896, when Picasso was still a teenager, he completed his first masterpiece. Father and son had chosen the subject together, the First Communion. Pablo was just 15 when he signed this first painting, Pablo Ruiz Picasso. He could do everything in drawing and painting, so he could do great religious painting, he could do great portraits, and why not go and paint the king and be like Velázquez and Goya and have his paintings in the Prado and be a great court painter? Why not? He had it in him. But to the disappointment of his father, being a fancy painter for the king and queen of Spain is not what Picasso had in mind. Pablo was still a teenager when he turned his back on academic art for good. He wanted to find another kind of art. A great artist was in gestation. Pablo was 18 years old and living in Barcelona, away from his father's supervision, but with no money, as Don Jose had cut off his allowance. He hung around with a group of friends who were also former art students. One of them was Carlos Casajemas, the romantic figure in the group, and his best friend. The young artists were rebels. They needed to renounce everything they'd learned and everything that made them, their family values, their art education. With these friends, Pablo was seeking a new path for his painting. His friends made him realize that other things were happening in art and that art was changing in Paris and Munich. It was evident to Pablo that if Paris was where modern art was happening, he had to go to Paris. It was crazy in Paris because the World Fair 1900 was on. One of the major attractions of the World Fair was the Grand Palais. Opened for the event, it housed a huge exhibition tracing 100 years of French art. And all the great masters were there. Rodin. 
Toulouse-Lautrec, Cézanne, Renoir, Van Gogh. Pablo was overwhelmed at the sight of this brightly colored exhibition as he had only seen these masterpieces in poor black and white reproductions. Even though he revered all these great artists, he only had a single idea in mind, to measure himself against them. And he was convinced that he, Pablo Ruiz Picasso, could do better. But unfortunately, before Picasso could begin working on his next masterpiece, he underwent a personal tragedy involving his best friend, Carlos Casajemas. Casajemas developed a violent passion for Germaine Gargalo. She was a laundry girl who also posed for artists in the neighborhood. The young romantic artist lovingly drew the muse who occupied his every thought. But the young couple grew apart, rows became a daily event, and Pablo saw his friend gradually sink into alcoholism. Carlos's alcoholism and depression eventually got so bad that he ended up shooting himself in a cafe surrounded by his friends. This tragic event shocked Picasso, and he processed it the only way he could, through his paintings. Pablo was just 20 when he painted his friend on his deathbed with the mark of the bullet on his temple. There's no doubt that this was one of Pablo Picasso's most personal and unclassifiable works. He kept the painting himself and only revealed its existence 50 years later. He completely stopped doing simple painting and started painting in a way that was haunted by death. The blaze of color was over. Pablo's painting became blue, only blue. Through this melancholic veil of blue, Pablo now looked at the other side of the Belle Epoque. The underside of Paris, the city of pleasures which had consumed Casajemas. These monochromatic blue paintings are Picasso's first truly great works. They express the intense sadness that Picasso felt after the loss of his friend, and also the sadness and poverty that he observed around him in the slums of Paris. His use of the color blue and the stylized way that he painted these figures was a break with traditional painting methods, and this would not be the first time that Picasso would revolutionize the painting world. The next stage of Picasso's art career, and the thing he is most known for, was inspired by something that he found in a museum. African sculptures and masks were exhibited there. He was struck by their magic powers, the deep ancestral feelings that he experienced. He was overwhelmed by their simplicity of form and geometric appearance. Inspired by this exhibition of African masks, Picasso set about creating his most innovative works yet. Large rimmed eyes, a nose in profile on a face that's head on. Angular features, cross-hatching in colors, or deliberately contradictory proportions. Picasso had successfully innovated a wild new style of painting. These works would later be labeled as completely new art movements, like primitivism and cubism. They showed subjects in bold shapes and bold colors, and sought to capture the essence, the soul, and the emotion of the subject, rather than to show what they realistically looked like. Picasso continued to experiment and develop this style until he came up with something called cubism, where he showed the world around him using geometric overlapping shapes. Collectors would soon be fighting over his masterpieces. His father died a few years later in 1913, just before his son made his fortune with his paintbrushes and became the most famous artist of the 20th century. <laughs>